Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with, with, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up on the uh, hazardous warning graphic, uh, quite a few areas lit up here, uh, red and yellow there, in the uh, northern and northeast interior, all the way out to the eastern Arctic coast. Those are winter weather advisories. Uh, that's out um, Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday. Uh, snow and blowing snow with east winds 25 to 35 miles an hour reduce visibilities there. And then we have winter storm warning for heavy snow here from the eastern north slope into the northeast Berks Range. And that is for uh, beginning, let's see, Tuesday afternoon and continuing through Tuesday night, actually later in the afternoon tomorrow, and throughout the night, Tuesday night, and that's for heavy snow anywhere from five to seven inches expected uh, throughout these areas. And down to the south here, we've got winter weather advisories out for uh, anywhere from uh, four to seven inches of snow here kicking in tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow night here south of the warning area there, mostly the upper Yukon Valley into the Koyukuk Valley. And then the winter weather advisories here back toward Galena, that's for possible freezing rain in toward Tanana. Same thing, possible freezing rain. And that's for the same time period uh, tomorrow night into, uh, or sometime tomorrow midday to the afternoon, continuing through tomorrow night. And that extends into the central Tanah Valley, but excluding the Fairbanks area, not expecting any uh, freezing precipitation. So out of the uh, advisory there, but that extends into the 40 mile country of possible freezing rain. And down to the south here in the Alaska range, high wind warnings for the uh, areas through the passes. Uh, for winds gusting coming back up, gusting to 70 miles an hour for uh, tomorrow and tomorrow night. Now, moving on to satellite imagery, you can see uh, kind of drying out over the southeast coast, especially with all the heavy rain fell uh, today over the northern panhandle, but the next batch of moisture south to north rolling right up into the north Gulf Coast, and heavy rain's already returning to the, uh, Kenai, or the Kenai Peninsula, southern Kenai Peninsula, on up across Prince William Sound to Cordova, reporting heavy rain today, and starting to increase again back toward Yakutat, uh, but um, still 12-hour amounts with Toya Bay over two and a quarter inches, with 24-hour amount about seven inches, but that's tapered off this afternoon, and dry down to the south. Some clouds up there along the Arctic coast, and the front pushing just east of Kodiak Island there, and uh, only five hundredths of the state airport, but uh, Akiak on the southwest side picked up two-thirds of an inch. And low pressure unsettled here over the southeast bearing into Bristol Bay. But there are some clearing periods, uh, northeast Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, and a narrow slot of possible clearing up there just north of the Brooks Range. And higher pressure making uh, lighter conditions out there for ADAC on out to Shimiuth. Uh, just about nothing in the way of any shower activity. Some showers did move into ADAC this afternoon, and that was about it, and some light precipitation, uh, nothing too extensive for the Perbilof Islands. But winds on the increase, St. Lawrence Island today, uh, northeast, gusts 45 miles an hour at Gamble this afternoon. Conditions dry there, just clouds, pretty gusty winds into the Bering Strait, or in, in through the Bering Strait, up the Chukchi Sea. East winds gusting 30, 35 miles an hour, eastern Arctic coast, just some spotty areas of flurries up there and becoming a little breezy here over the northeast interior as well. 45 mile an hour wind gusts currently Delta Junction. Those are due to come up as the whole system lifts northward again through tomorrow into tomorrow evening. And winds on the increase for the North Gulf Coast here with uh, moderate rain occurring western, or, yeah, western Prince William Sound passage, Portage Glacier and those areas increasing for Seward. Uh, and there's a flood advisory out for the uh, Resurrection River at Seward for uh, later tonight into tomorrow as more heavy rain comes in. Again, expecting anywhere from uh, two to five inches to fall through these areas and uh, continuing to increase there around Cordova. Also, storm warnings tonight 
as we'll see that front comes up very tight gradient here so storm warnings out for Prince William Sound southeast 50 knots seas 13 feet storm warnings also for the Gulf of Alaska uh, and then late tonight as that shifts eastward the winds will begin to come down toward morning and rainfall will gradually diminish as it shifts over toward the eastern north Gulf Coast looks like a dry night tonight over the panhandle and then all that moisture riding northward uh, tonight so look for the snow and precipitation and mixed precipitation types to increase there uh, through the uh, northern and northeast interior low pressure winds continue but mostly dry st lawrence island so gusts 40 to 50 miles an hour up through the bering strait quite a tight gradient there in the western arctic coast so i uh, could see some pretty gusty winds 50 miles an hour possible there for cape lisbon point hope pretty windy for kivalina and windy also here for the Aleutians on the back side of that, northwest 30 or 25 to possibly 45, maybe even gusts 50 miles an hour in some areas. And as that trough swings through, that'll enhance those winds again from about Atka in toward the Fox Islands throughout the day. And wind still there for St. Lawrence Island, getting some rain now or mixed precipitation back up along the front here. Again, warmer air surging northward, so uh, initially starting out as snow, still expected four to seven inches there. And some areas seen some freezing rain, but late tomorrow as the front pushes northward, it should improve there over the Tana Valley. Rain mostly moderate now along the North Gulf Coast. And then taking a look at the day on Wednesday, as you can see, much uh, better conditions now. It really dries out over the interior here with uh, maybe some clearing possible from the 40 mile country into the mid Tanana Valley. Mostly dry, just uh, scattered showers here, mainly over the mountainous terrain, the Lotto Hills, Kilbrook Auckland Mountains, Alaska Range. Otherwise, just generally cloudy elsewhere. Low pressure in Bristol Bay uh, keeps it pretty breezy over the peripheral office with periods of rain and fog. That'll extend down into the Fox Islands because you guess 25, maybe 40 miles an hour. Mostly strongest winds will probably be over toward Nikolsky. Winds diminishing here. Uh, Adak and Atka with uh, maybe some sun breaking out in those areas as high pressure. Pretty strong ridge through the western Bering Sea. And this trough, uh, again, brings another round of moderate rainfall, not as heavy as what you'll see in the next 24 hours. We'll keep it wet. Prince William Sound over to Cordova, Yakutat, and across the northern panhandle. And Prince Wales Island, maybe just isolated showers, uh, basically just uh, mostly cloudy. And the Arctic coast, uh, looks like the weather improves on the east side there with uh, probably drying out, much lighter winds, and uh, even lightening up on the winds here on the west side, but that's probably where the bulk of the uh, snowfall and reduced visibilities will occur from the central coast on down to roughly Cape Lisbon, down sloping dry conditions, Kivalina, Point Hope into Kotzebue Sound, isolated showers, the Seward Peninsula along the Alaska Range. Lows for tonight, mid to upper 40s for the Panhandle. Uh, Again, pretty mild under southerly flow, also under mild southerly flow here, lows 40 to 45, south central Alaska, mid 40s Kodiak, mid to upper 40s to the Alaska Peninsula. After a pretty mild day today, 61 in King Salmon, uh, pretty warm for this time of the month, uh, down to lower 50s for the highs tomorrow, lower 50s south central Alaska. And for the lows the following morning, 20s in the north to 40s in the south, and then the highs 40s to lower 50s in the south to upper 20s on the eastern Arctic coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And the first line weather graphic uh, for Tuesday morning showing uh, kind of a swath of uh, varying amounts of IFR here from uh, the southeast Bering Sea. Fox Island is the Pervilofs up over the uh, southwest mountains here, Yukon Delta Coast, Nunavik Island and from the Nalato Hills, east-northeast, up across the upper Yukon of the Brooks Range, north slope, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, more IFR, north Gulf Coast, coming into the Gulf of Alaska, and along the central and western Alaska Range, marginal to the east, and marginal VFR here, mostly with the northern panhandle, VFR down to the south for the afternoon. Marginal VFR spreads all the way down to Dixon Entrance with IFR now along the coast and staying a little more, or becoming more extensive up north, Coast range in the North Gulf Coast, uh, Wrangell Mountains, Prince William Sound IFR, but it looks like improving to the south. Marginal VFR, South Central Alaska, Copper River Basin right up and trying to get over the top of the Alaska range there, but still a VFR. Uh, through most of the Tanah Valley, 40 mile country, big area IFR, Kobuk, Koyukuk, Upper Yukon Valley areas, back down to the north side of the Seward Peninsula, northward across the Brooks Range on out to the eastern Arctic coast. And for the uh, morning hours on Wednesday, 
big area IFR continues, actually expands up here to the north, uh, all the way over to Point Lay, eastward to uh, Mackenzie River Delta, and then south in across the Coba Koyukuk Valleys, and uh, half of the upper Yukon Valley areas. So you can see the 40 mile country still in VFR, but Copper River Basin, marginal, IFR along the Alaska Range, and the Wrangell Mountains on down. All of the Panhandle looks IFR, and marginal VFR brings the Aleutians. And for Wednesday afternoon, uh, some VFR breaks out here, especially for Atka Island, trying to get into Mikulski, otherwise staying marginal out that way into Bristol Bay. Uh, west side, Kodiak Island, uh, marginal VFRs means VFR on the east side, and trying to break out in Cook Inlet, but most of southern Alaska here, marginal. VFR, eastern interior again, IFR just south of the Brooks Range, and also on the north side there from the central Arctic coast eastward, and marginal VFR for just about all the panhandle. Passes Anatovic and Attigan, both mostly VF, mostly IFR tomorrow with uh, Tuesday's outlook for Lake Clark and Merrill starting out IFR and gradually becoming marginal uh, by afternoon. And for rainy, uh, improving trend, but uh, probably will say marginal won't improve to VFR. And windy, marginal VFR times, occasional possible IFR southern entrance uh, throughout the day, especially in the morning hours. Lesser extent in the afternoon, Isabel marginal. And Mintasta, staying VFR with a uh, chance of some marginal VFR southern entrance. Tanita, IFR becoming marginal in the afternoon. And Portage IFR the entire day with probably low IFR early on. Chilkoot and White, VFR trending toward IFR into the afternoon. And the freezing levels here, uh, about two to 3,000 feet over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, pick it up at 4,000 for the Alaska Peninsula and Nunavak Island and then uh, kind of a tighter gradient up here to the northeast, uh, 8,000 feet, North Gulf Coast, 10, still quite warm aloft here uh, across the southeast coast, 8 to, or eight to 10 to 12,000 feet. Icing above 8,000 feet here, now mostly be up in the north here, could be some considerable moderate uh, rime icing above 8,000 feet in the north coast. North Gulf Coast, lower elevations there, above about four to 5,000 feet here, some moderate variety, mostly enhanced due from the uh, terrain and then isolated here across southern Alaska into Bristol Bay, another swath up here in the north of about 2,000. So that could be on the uh, considerable moderate side along the Brooks Range, possibly in the Kobuk Valley. Checking out the jet stream, upper level trough, a uh, weaker one, stronger one down here over Bristol Bay, a weaker one up here over the northeast. So that just uh, means a big trough here across the interior Alaska, north northwesterlies. Uh, up to 90 knots, central Aleutians, the main jet right into the southeast coast now, so the whole thing's shifting eastward from where it is today. It'll be aimed right into the panhandle for tomorrow. 9,000 foot wind flow chart showing uh, strongest low here, southwest of Cuscoan Bay. Southwest 20 to 30 knots, up to 40 into the Gulf, and 50 across the southeast interior, 15 to 20 on the Arctic coast, northwest up to 40 over the central Aleutians. 3,000 foot winds, uh, southwest 25 to 30, so lighter when you have a, a 5, 000, at 9,000 here for the panel, it's up to around 40 and 50 knots. Be 20 and 30 at this elevation, 20 to 30 also for the North Gulf Coast. And easterly is up to 30 knots, central Arctic coast, northwest 40 in across the southern Bering Sea in the Aleutians. And turbulence looking like this, pretty bumpy for the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula up in the northwest, North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle. be many miles long, from 1 to 100 feet high, traveling at 400 miles per hour. This ocean monster is known as a tsunami, and it can wreak havoc on coastal populations and landscapes. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves caused by any large and sudden disturbance of the sea surface. Tsunamis can be generated by landslides, volcanic eruptions, or even meteorite impacts in the ocean but they are most often caused by an earthquake where there's a sudden displacement of the ocean floor. When that happens, there's a transfer of energy from the sea floor to the ocean, causing waves on the surface to radiate outward in all directions. In deep waters, these waves may not even be detectable. But when the tsunami enters shallower waters, the wave speed slows and its height increases. The water along the coast may recede noticeably. A large wall of turbulent water, called a bore, may also form. When the tsunami hits, 
It may come ashore like a fast-rising flood and strike with devastating force. The series of waves may continue for hours. The first one may not be the last or the largest. For your safety, know the potential warning signs of an incoming tsunami. A strong earthquake that causes difficulty standing. A rapid rise or fall of the water along the coast. A loud ocean roar. When you're in a coastal area, it's important to keep alert for messages from local officials, such as lifeguards, police, the U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers, and NOAA All Hazards Radio. If you find yourself in a location of a tsunami strike, here's what you need to do to stay safe. Keep calm. Walk or run to higher ground, 100 feet above sea level or one mile inland. Do not drive. Keep roads open for emergency vehicles. If you cannot move to higher ground, use the stairs to get to the third floor or higher in a sturdy building. Follow all instructions from local officials and stay out of coastal areas until authorities issue an all clear. Tsunamis can strike any coastline in the world and can affect locations thousands of miles away from where they formed. They may be uncommon, but the devastation they cause makes them a deadly force in nature. For more information on tsunamis, go to the following sites. Tsunami, a killer wave, speeding across the ocean at 400 miles an hour. It smashes into land, destroying everything in its path. Tsunamis do not have a season, but they can strike any coast at any time. If one forms close to the shore, the shaking of the earth and a loud roar may warn of its approach. But when a tsunami forms across the ocean, it can take hours to reach the shore. Enough time to warn people to move to higher land. Over the past 20 years, NOAA has developed DART, a real-time monitoring system that provides data for forecasting tsunamis. The DART systems have been deployed in earthquake-prone areas throughout the ocean, including the Pacific and Indian basins. A DART system combines a surface buoy and a sensor on the ocean floor. This sensor detects changes in water pressure and seismic activity and transmits the data back to the surface. If these changes indicate a tsunami may form, the buoy signals an alert via satellite to the tsunami warning centers in Alaska and Hawaii. Back at the centers, scientists plug the data into pre-existing models. These models predict the height, the arrival time, and the coastal locations that the tsunami will hit. Watches and warnings are issued to the affected communities so preparations can begin. Today, 47 DART stations are positioned all around the world, ready to detect and warn coastal communities about the next potential tsunami. With the DART system and tsunami warning centers in place, we are now better prepared to predict a killer wave before it strikes. December 26, 2004. What began as an undersea earthquake in the Indian Ocean ended as the most deadly tsunami in recorded history, with nearly 240,000 lives lost. This was a devastating wake-up call to coastal communities and tsunami research. Prior to this event, only six of NOAA's Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunami, or DART, buoys were in place. Scientists could only predict tsunami arrival times, not flood potential. 
and there was not a global tsunami warning system. Today, 10 years later, we can tell a different story. U.S. and international coastlines are far better prepared for such a catastrophe, thanks in large part to research and technology developed at the NOAA Center for Tsunami Research at Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory. NOAA's DART array is now complete, with 39 buoys operated by the National Weather Service's National Data Buoy Center. Along with 21 international buoys, this array can measure a tsunami wave as small as one centimeter in the open ocean and provide these data in real time to forecast when a tsunami may hit the coast and how much flooding there will be. NOAA scientists and engineers are currently testing the fourth generation DART buoy that will be able to measure local tsunamis as well as distant ones. Flooding forecast models incorporate local topography and historical tsunami data in order to more accurately predict exactly how a tsunami might behave when it reaches shore. NOAA has 75 site-specific models that can provide high-resolution flooding forecasts for effective response and mitigation during a tsunami event. NOAA has gathered data from every tsunami since 2004 to improve its forecast models. Today, it operates the world's only real-time tsunami flooding forecast system using DART data to accurately compute flooding forecasts. The NOAA Tsunami Warning Centers make tsunami data available on the Internet and issue advisories, watches and warnings through the Emergency Alert System and via NOAA weather radios. While it is impossible to prevent a tsunami, we are now much better prepared to detect them and predict their paths and impacts so those in coastal communities can take the steps necessary to safely protect themselves. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis, a big significant change from yesterday. This whole area has filled in now with uh, thin ice uh, up through here was wide open. Still have a sea, sea ice free area right there surrounded by heavier ice and also uh, southward push here. It looks like uh, in closer to the coast than it was and that uh, area that was an island of ice for practically the entire summer now uh, become, has now become part of the uh, ice pack. And not much change along the Arctic coast. I mean, a little bit of growth uh, as it uh, ice forms and then gets pushed in toward the coastline. All that appears to be inside the, bar the barrier islands. Anyway, going to the coastal water forecast, south winds, 30 knots, extreme south coast. Otherwise, gale warnings out for tomorrow, 35 to as high as 40 knots there. For the remainder of the coastline with seas uh, 12 to 15 feet. Small craft advisories over the inside waters for south to southeast winds, uh, 25 knots and 5 foot seas. For Wednesday, winds come down considerably there, southeast 15. Uh, Clarence Strait, Stevens Passage to south 15. Lynn Canal seas down to 3 feet and 20 knot winds now out of the southwest along the coast with uh, 9 to 10 foot seas. Going to Cook Inlet tomorrow, north of the Forelands, just southeast of 10, 20 knots, southern Cook Inlet, and small craft advisories for Kamishak Bay, southeast 25, south 25, Barren Islands, and the North Gulf Coast. And after the storm warning tonight for Prince William Sound, a 50 knot winds out of the southeast and 13 foot seas overnight tonight, the winds tomorrow afternoon come down to about 20 knots with six foot seas. And then for Wednesday, even a little lighter for the sound there, southeast 15, 4 foot sea, south 15 to 20 for Cook Inlet, 25 knot winds, Kamishak Bay, and from the Barren Islands, all along the North Gulf Coast, pretty uniform uh, wind and sea heights, 20 knots from the south, and the sea's 11 feet. Kodiak Island, uh, 30 knot winds up the east side there, all the way back to Castle Cape uh, from the south, southeast 20 for uh, Shelikoff Strait, southeast 20 also for Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, southwest 20 to 30 knots, strongest on the Pacific side with 14 foot seas. Outlook for Wednesday, southeast 15, Bristol Bay. Otherwise, good westerlies, 25 right across the peninsula, turn south 25, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, up the east side of Kodiak, south 20, Shelikoff Strait. 
And out in the Aleutians, uh, central Aleutians, gales, minimum gales northwest, 35 knots, 14 to 17 foot seas. That extends back to Amchitka Island. West of there, tad lighter, northwest 30. And the eastern Aleutians, Fox Islands here, uh, west release 25 to mostly 30 knots with seas 9 to 14 feet. Outlook for Wednesday, northwest, gale force northwest release, uh, except south of Unalaska Island, 30 knots there, but seas as high as 20 feet. Northwest 35 continue for the central Aleutians with uh, seas as high as 20 feet in the Bering Sea side, diminishing down to just 15 out of the southwest in that far western zone. And for the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, southeast 20, northeast 25, north of Nunavak Island, gale force winds, St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sounds, northeast 25, north 40 there for the St. Matthew Island area and 25 for the Pribilofs. Wednesday, north winds 30 knots, coming down a little bit there, St. Lawrence Island, down to uh, Nunavak Island and then east 20 knots out of uh, uh, the um, south of Nunavak Island. 30 knot northerlies for the Perloffs and gales continue for St. Matthew Island, 14 foot seas. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast tomorrow, the extreme east side there toward demarcation point. East, 35 knots, good for gales, small craft advisories, remainder of the area all the way over to Cape Beaufort. And then you're back into the gales from Cape Beaufort all the way down to the Bering Strait and beyond with 12 foot seas. And for Wednesday, see it's pretty windy, but uh, under gale force now, northerlies from uh, Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, 30 knots, small craft advisories, west side 25, otherwise central coast, demarcation point, east winds, 30 knots, seas anywhere from 9 to 13 feet. For tonight, again, uh, throw a little flurries into the breezy conditions up there, but that'll increase as this moisture lifts northward and uh, good northeast winds there along the northwest coast. Heavy rain tonight, uh, strong winds north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound shift eastward Tuesday. And on Wednesday, that front uh, finally kicks out of the area, but another trough brings uh, moderate amounts of rain to the north Gulf Coast here. Really dries out over the interior after the uh, winter storm warning for the Brooks Range, eastern north slope tonight. Winter weather advisories tonight or tomorrow into tomorrow night for the interior. Much better conditions coming up on Wednesday. Still pretty windy over the southeast, bearing an unsettled weather back in along the Alaska Peninsula. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.